Okay, let's talk about journal entries. If accounting is the language of business, then journal entries are the words of that language. And it's really important that we get a real good understanding of journal entries before we go any further. So we've talked about financial statements. We learned that the income statement, for example, was revenue or sales minus expenses. The balance sheet shows assets, things that we own, liabilities, things that we owe, and the difference between what we own and what we owe is our equity in the business. But how do we get these numbers? How do we know that sales were 10,600? How do we know that interest payable was $50? Well, we get those numbers from the accounting cycle. The accounting cycle is either eight or nine steps, depending on your accounting text. Our book uses nine. The first step is to analyze a transaction to see if there's anything for us to record. And if there is something for us to record, then we create a journal entry. Then we'll post all that data into individual accounts. We'll strike a trial balance to make sure that we've got equal debits and credits. We'll make some adjustments to get our revenue and our expenses in the right periods. We'll do another adjusted trial balance to make sure that our debits and credits still equal each other. Then we'll create our financial statements. Then we'll start counting our sales and our expenses all over again. So we'll have to close out our temporary accounts every year. And then we'll do a post-closing trial balance to make sure we've done everything right. So don't worry that you don't understand any of those words. Today, we're just going to take care of steps one and two of the accounting cycle. So we're going to analyze a transaction in the first step. Is there something for us to record? Is cash changing hands? Are we earning revenue? Are we incurring expenses? Are we acquiring assets with or without cash? Are we selling assets with or without cash? Any of those transactions are going to require a journal entry. And that means debits and credits. Debit means left. Credit means right. One isn't good. One isn't bad. That's really, really important. Debit means left. Credit means right. One isn't good. One isn't bad. Okay, we're going to talk about three different ways to learn the rules for journal entries. But however you learn it initially is going to kind of become irrelevant. Believe it or not, it's going to become second nature to you after we do a few practice runs. First rule for journal entries is they always balance. The dollar amounts of the debits equal the dollar amount of the credits. Second rule, assets increase with debits. That's easy to remember because debit means left and assets are on the left-hand side of the balance sheet. Please remember that debits and credits, those words don't appear on the financial statements, but they are a tool to get us to the financial statements at the end of the accounting cycle. So rule number two, assets increase with debits. That's easy to remember because assets are on the left-hand side of the balance sheet and debit means left. Liabilities and owner's equity accounts increase with credits. That's easy to remember because they're on the right-hand side of the balance sheet and credit means right. Expenses are debits, expenses are debits, expenses are debits. I say that because most of the time in the real world, we're writing checks. We're debiting rent expense, crediting cash. We're debiting salaries and wages expense, crediting cash. If you can remember that expenses are debits, expenses are debits, expenses are debits, you can figure out what happens to all the other accounts from that. For example, if expenses are debits, the opposite of expenses is revenue, so those accounts must increase with credits. And lastly, owner's drawing accounts increase with debits. When the owner takes money out, we're going to debit owner's drawings and credit cash. So just a reminder, big picture, we're in the second step of the accounting cycle. We're learning to make journal entries. Those six rules may be a little bit much for you to digest. So our textbook breaks it down in terms of the accounting equation. Assets on the left-hand side of the balance sheet increase with debits, decrease with credits. Liabilities on the right-hand side are just the opposite. They increase with credits and decrease with debits. Here you see that owner's drawings are debits. We talked about that in rule six. And we said that revenue, which is the opposite of expenses, increases with credits. And we said that expenses are debits. Expenses are debits. Expenses are debits. A third way to look at it might be to make a little chart. Increases with. Debit means left. Credit means right. Assets. 
Things on the left-hand side of the balance sheet increase with debits. That's easy to remember because debit means left and assets are on the left-hand side of the balance sheet. Liabilities and owner's equity increase with credits. That's easy to remember because they're on the right-hand side of the balance sheet and credit means right. Expenses or debits, expenses or debits, expenses or debits. That's easy to remember because I say it a bazillion times. The opposite of expenses is revenue. So if expenses increase with debits, revenue accounts must increase with credits. And drawings start with a D. And so it's easy to remember that we record owner's drawings with debits. All right, you don't learn debits and credits by reading about debits, credits. You certainly don't learn it by listening to me yammer on about it. But you do learn debits and credits by doing debits and credits. So let's do three of them. Two will be simple journal entries, and one will be called a compound journal entry. On 9-1, the owner invests $15,000 cash into the business. A good thing to think about when we're first learning journal entries is what's happening to cash. Cash is an asset. If cash is increasing from the business's point of view, then we're going to be debiting cash. So what's happening in this transaction? Cash is going up from the viewpoint of the company, so we're going to be debiting cash. So we write the date in the left-hand column. We put the account title, cash, and then we debit cash for $15,000. The convention is to write the debits first. But most importantly, I want to remind you that what goes in here is an account title, like cash or accounts receivable or building. We don't put in here invested cash. This is no place for phrases and sentences. If we had $15,000 worth of debits, we remember we have to have $15,000 worth of credits. And what's happening to owner's capital? Well, it's going up. The owner is investing $15,000 cash. Liabilities and owner's equity accounts increase with credits. So we're crediting that account for $15,000. And then the right place to put that sentence, put that phrase is in this memo line. It reminds us, and perhaps more importantly, reminds the next person looking at our books exactly what just happened. All right, let's do another simple journal entry. A simple journal entry means one debit and one credit. The company buys equipment for $7,000 cash. Equipment is an asset, so it should increase with debits. Cash is an asset, so it should decrease with credits. Assets increase with debits and decrease with credits. So we put the date out here. The convention is to write the debit first. We debit equipment for $7,000. We credit cash for $7,000. Again, this account title section here, this is no place for phrases or sentences. We use exact, precise account titles. And if we want to, and we probably should, we make a little memo with a little sentence down there to explain to ourselves and to the next person exactly what happened. In this case, we say that the company purchased a lathe for $7,000 cash. Okay, let's graduate and do a compound journal entry. The company buys $14,000 of equipment, putting $8,000 down and the rest on account. Remember, on account means account payable. We're gonna pay them later. Why don't you pause this video and see if you can create that journal entry, that compound journal entry where we buy equipment for $14,000, paying $8,000 cash and $6,000 on account. I hope you got it. Equipment is an asset. Assets increase with debits, so we debit equipment for $14,000. Cash is an asset, so it increases with debits, means it must decrease with a credit. And accounts payable is a liability account. Any account that has the word payable in it is a liability account, so it increases with credits. Again, we used precise account titles here, and we put our sentence down here in our memo line. Bought a truck for cash with a balance on account. So big picture, if accounting is a language of business, and it is, the words of that language are journal entries. We've got to understand these 100% before we go any further. And our rules are, they always balance. If we have $100,000 worth of debits, we have $100,000 worth of credits. Assets increase with debits. That's easy to remember because debit means left, and assets are on the left-hand side of the balance sheet. Liabilities and owner's equity accounts increase with credits. That's easy to remember because credit means right, and liabilities and owner's equity accounts are on the right-hand side of the balance sheet. Expenses or debits, expenses or debits, expenses or debits, that's easy to remember because I say it a gazillion times. The opposite of expenses is revenue. So if expenses increase with debits, revenue accounts must increase with credits, and owner's drawings increase with debits. That's easy to remember because they both start with Ds. 
So it doesn't really matter which way you initially learn the rules for journal entries. What matters is that you eventually master the concept of a journal entry that always balances. And what's also important, of course, is expenses are debits, expenses are debits, expenses are debits.